This is beautiful Antigua in the Eastern Caribbean. This is English Harbor. During the 18th century, hundreds of British ships were docked here under the watchful eye of Admiral Nelson. Be preparing. Seafood water, seasoned rice, pumpkin pancakes and pineapple relish. At historic Betty's Hope, a sugar plantation, all to give you a taste of history from Antigua. Today, what an exciting moment. I'm here at Betty's Hope, and guess who's with me? Arlene, who is one of the greatest chefs of Antigua. Let me show you our family business, Cabo's Cook Shop. Come wait, on with me, Walter. Wait. Let's go. She's making a dish that I had the last time I was in Antigua, and I fell in love with it. And then I find out this dish has been made centuries ago already. It's not something new invented. Arlene just does it better than most people. So Arlene, tell me about this secret dish that you're making. Oh, it's actually called seafood water and we have our secret ingredients that we put in it. Can we tell on camera? Or it's a top secret. No. You can tell? No it? way. No <laughs> way. <laughs> so, okay, so let's get started. First, you gotta help me cut some onions. All right. Cut. Like so? Yes. Nice, rustic. We're gonna put some butter in the pan. You wanna put any of the uh, hot peppers or you leave it mild later? You're gonna put a little later, seasoned we'll peppers? Hot pepper, yeah. A couple of those? One for later, yeah. Yep. We leave the seeds in it because the seeds adds additional flavor into it. So the conch we already pre poached because it takes a little bit of time, mm -hmm. but it's right there. So now we're gonna take this on the fire yes, and, and then, then to add. the rest of it and add it into it. Yes. All right. We'll Want me to carry the pot for you? Yes, please. All right, here we go. Here we go. We're gonna start this a little bit. I'm just Con gonna stir it. It's going to get hot in a minute. There's nothing better than cooking an open fire with hot iron. Can you try helping me do that, Walter? Of course. Now you're talking. I'm a fireman. <laughs> Cut some lobsters up. All right. Small pieces. All right. There's a couple of ways you can do that when you do lobsters. Once you want to be very careful, a lot of people lose a finger over lobster, you know that, right? This one over here, just pieces like so. While you're doing that, Walter, let me get the cup. Yep. And I'll slice some up as well. I'm gonna go back over to the beautiful fire we got going over there. Doing good. Very good, very good. Right. You'll be proud of me. It's doing real good, all right? Okay. With the scallops. Yes, you're gonna cut the scallops. Just cut them in half, what do you think? All right. whole thing. Perfect. I'm going to put it in the pot. Yeah, we're ready to go. Here we go. Yep. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. you smell that water? Oh, do I smell it? Goodness. I smell it from over there. It's beautiful. And look how quick and fast yeah. and how colorful already. It just screams, eat me. Ah. Look at that. It's gorgeous. I can't wait for it to yeah. finish. Thank you. So all, all of it? All of there it. There you go. This is going to take no time. No time. A little rosemary you want? A little piece? Little piece? Yeah. You want any basil in there? Yes. And a little bit of garlic. Garlic, yep. Yeah. Just a couple more sprites. Maybe two more. All right. Here I'm we go. Add some salt and pepper to taste. Let it cook. Here we go. Let's go see what's happening in here. Oh yeah, looking good. So now we're adding the garlic and all the herbs that we have here. And then you have salt and pepper here for you. You don't think I'm not going to make this ever again, this <laughs> recipe. You can believe that. You're going to come back to Antigua. But that's true, but I also want to make it at home. Try it yourself. Beautiful. Take oh, man. That's going to be good. Arlene, what's different uh, here, what we're doing today, than what you do in the restaurant? Is it basically the same thing? Just the same thing. Yeah. 
And I know people come from all... All over. ...to eat it. Well, I had that, I had your seasoned rice, I had your pumpkin fruit, I had everything in your place. I gained about 15 pounds oh. eating, eating with you. I'm just doing my secret mixture here. This is this is very interesting because actually where the mixture comes from, uh, it's also in Chinese cooking is used mm. a lot. So let's uh, finish up the soup because look at that, this yeah, fire is gone. Yeah, yeah oh, definitely. Yep. <laughs> Telling you, it's a serious fire we got there. So while I'll pour you some, yeah, yeah? A little bit, not too much, just enough to be just a little. To get tied up. Just a little bit more. Perfect. Perfecto. All right. Yep. I mean, a little chop it for you. No, you use half. Just a half whole. Yes, because it's really hot. Pick a little finger there. Yeah, that's right. Look at the flavor out here. All right. So we'll taste again one more time. And We're ready to yes. taste it. Let's taste it one more time. Oh boy. Perfect. That is heavenly. That's the word. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. There's a lot of great flavor in there. Yeah. Let's see our handiwork. You see, this is so, so nice. With many of the dishes that I find from the 18th century in the Caribbean. They're not overworked, they're beautiful, they're fresh, wholesome. You feel everything that's in there. That's true. The goodness. See, like I said. It's good too. Like we said, there's only one word describes it. That's right. Heavenly. Heavenly. <laughs> Betty's Hope is the oldest and largest sugar plantation on Antigua. Started in 1650, it was a thriving operation by the mid-1700s. Walter, this is the center of activity. This is the owner's house on the plantation. From this position, he could see everything all around and keep an eye on activities in the mill because that mill could not shut down. The sugar had to be crushed within 24 hours of being cut. Doctor, it had to be a big investment to create a mill like that, what do you think, at the time? Exactly, that's the single most expensive investment. Everything depended on the mill running. Well, Walter, this is the windmill. I can see there are two mills here. In fact, they work together as a team. At the very top of it, we have what's called a cap house, where the wind shaft comes through. The entire building was operated from the lever or the mm -hmm. tail tree. You'd get about 30 good strong men or a couple of oxen, and you'd push this. And the entire building on top would turn, would turn. slowly into the wind. So what I used to also do was, when it's operating, you'll get the young lads who are quite fit, they will actually jump on to the sails. And as the mill's going round and round, they're going upside down and around, working on the sails, reefing them in, and then they'll hop off again. When you look at this and you appreciate what's involved, you realize how dangerous this whole operation yep. was. Yep. This is a stalk of sugarcane. You can see what we call the eyes, just like it's a grass. And yep. here the roots coming out, yep. all along the length of it. The way this process worked, this was the main door where they brought all mm -hmm. the product in. This is the feeder shaft. You put the cane here and it goes down in between. And you can see there are three rollers. So it goes in through the row first and out through the second. The wind is turning this windmill. There's no brakes, there's no way to slow it down. So the guy operating it had to know exactly how much to push at a, any given time. It took 13 turns of the sails outside to make one revolution, one revolution here. on the roller. So it's a slow process when you think about it. The plant production took place to the west and the south. We have three times the boiling capacity, so they're producing three times as much sugar. And again, the, the production of rum up here is quite phenomenal. There's an entire structure just for making rum. So we know that they, they made vast quantities which they sold to the British Navy. Well, it was right up the street, so it was easy. Exactly. <laughs> Didn't have to go on a ship, just put it over land. <laughs> just rolled across <laughs> the island of Barrow. Yeah. Well, I'm here with Lydia George, who is quite a culinary expert down here in Antigua. And I know her for many, many years. So when we decided to bring a taste of history to Antigua. I had to find somebody that could really cook truly good Antiguan food. The seasoned rice that you make, everybody has a secret, I know that. Antigua is full of secrets. Keep your secret. To yourself. <laughs> Do you wonder why I have a pig laying in front of me? Many people maybe have never seen a whole pig. I'm going way back when in the 18th century, somebody had lots of money, they could afford better cuts of the pork. However, the seasoned rice uses usually the snout of the pork and byproducts and a little bit of chicken. Yeah. So it's really something that's a stable food for all kinds of people. You don't have to have lots of money to have a good, uh, to have a good seasoned rice, correct? No. If I would be from Antigua and I would work in a different place of the world, if I'd be homesick, what do I make myself? A seasoned rice. Here you go. <laughs> it's exactly what it is. This is the pig mouth and the pig tail. That would cook in our local season, yeah. right? That's already, that's already, already pre-blanched. Pre -blanched. 
And this is the red bean peas that is pre-cooked. Pre-cooked, so you to finish on time. Gorgeous. We have some right here that yep. is not cooked as yet. We have thyme. Okay, we have sweet peppers. That's hot pepper. Chicken. And that's the rice. Butter, onion, good. You want to make sure that the flavor comes out of it. If you would throw it in raw, it wouldn't be the same. Lydia, do you cook this for yourself at home too? Yes, I do. See? That's our local dish. Yeah. That's what we use. Let me put this part over here. I'll go right away, give it a couple seconds. That'd be perfect. Now the chicken, you, you can use different cuts as well. You don't yeah, have to just use the wings. You no, could use... You can use yep. different cuts of chicken. We're going to put the peas in. And... A little bit on. Here we go. Let me check quick on the, on the chicken, so we're going to burn it for you. Chopping some peppers. This is a, a pepper that's called a seasoning pepper. It has no heat, but a lot of flavor. I'm gonna put some thyme in there. Thyme in there, okay. And it goes into the, to the beans? The beans, the beans okay. yeah. Lydia, you check. And I'll look after the... Oh, yeah. Mine is cooking away big time. Look at that. Okay, go here. Put those in yep. there. Man, if the flavor, perfect. It's shaping up good. Now we gotta just check for salt and pepper and later put the rice in it. We use any rice. Any rice, we yeah. We use three yeah. yeah. rice, and just, main grade rice, yeah. long grade yeah. rice, but what we do, we wash them first. Good. So once the rice is cooked, we check on the seasoning and we're ready to eat. Yes. That's a beautiful thing. <laughs> we're yep. put the rice in, in there. Oh, Watch it. Okay, good. Let's see how this is coming there. Yep. So much flavor in there. How much garlic one in there? All right, good. Pepper. Salt. But it's so tasty. Beautiful. You told me nothing goes to waste. Here I go. <laughs> Here you go, chef. 15 minutes and we're ready to eat. Salt and pepper just brings it up a notch. Right. So it's very beautiful. It's a lot of yep. garlic too. Yep. To it make the flavor here in the end. Perfect. Look at that. But at your house, you don't cook it on an open fire, do you? Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> One of the most interesting places to visit in Antigua is English Harbor. British Admiral Horatio Nelson arrived in Antigua in 1784 to command a small ship repair harbor that became known as Nelson's Dockyards. In his few short years here, Nelson transformed English Harbor into the busiest and most important British naval outpost outside of London, and his career as Britain's most beloved naval officer had begun. They came here primarily for the hurricane season. And while they're here, they took advantage of having their repairs done, the bottoms cleaned, the rotten wood changed. This was the last stop before crossing the Atlantic back to Britain. So this became a major, major base of operations for making that Atlantic passage. Gigantic wooden frigates would be moored right here, and those spectacular, enormous capstans would then be manned by 180 sailors to be able to pull the ships to the side so repairs could be made. Naval ships depended on speed, and speed is the whole secret to survival. So you had to keep the bottom of the ship clean. How long do you think it took to empty one of these gigantic frigates? It took a couple of weeks, because when you think about it, each cannon had to weigh several tons, and you have up to 30 guns, 40 guns per frigate. You French guys, watch out. They came here to get medical repairs too, when you have fevers going through the ships. They come in here to use the hospital facilities. They always had problems with um, diseases and they always had problems with chronic shortage of manpower. Life on board of a frigate with six to eight hundred men had to be no piece of cake. Yes, they were very closely packed in and it's, uh, if you imagine back then where people didn't bathe too often, it was the best place to be. So I imagine there was a good amount of pollution uh, in the harbour then during this time. Thirty to forty ships with several hundred men each. You can imagine it would have been quite grim. Nelson, his favourite um, exercise every morning would be to have seven pails of water, salt water, dumped over his head. 
and the women used to, from the village used to swim out to the ships to try and sell provisions to the sailors. While the men were on board ship, you had to make sure they showed up for work. So literally, the boatswain would come along with a length of rope and stick a leg out, and if it's big and hairy, you get a good flogging for not being at work. But if it's female, she's left to rest. But they did let some small numbers of women on board. Again, it's the best way to keep the men on the ship. So every man on ship got a pint of rum a day, or a gallon of beer, right? That's correct. Usually had to be drunk before lunch. <laughs> so they actually had more alcohol-related accidents than people who died in warfare. More people died while being, being drunk, falling from the rigging, than in battle. How old do you like next to Dockhead when you went there? It was amazing. I could have spent a week there and not run out of things to see or discover. And now we're going to start on our fantastic pumpkin fritters, another antique and specialty. Most of our viewers have never seen a Caribbean pumpkin. It's a really beautiful side dish that goes along with anything. We're going to boil the pumpkin, and when we finish, we're going to mash it. This is the mashed pumpkin. Mm -hmm. We're going to put it into the bowl here. You're going to put in some cinnamon, lovely. We'll put in eggs. Just a pinch of sugar got a little bit of essence. Which we call in America vanilla extract. But well, there's so much vanilla goes around here. It's beautiful. Man, it's very good. Flour, mix it under. All right, good, here we go. You're going to mix it up. I mix it up. Oh, man, look at that. I'm going to put to work here. I've got to make sure the consistency is good, like a, like a regular pancake batter, so it doesn't, uh, and done it is. Then we're going to put on the skillet. The now, you can make them any size. If you like them bigger, smaller. I, I, can, I like this size though. It's really nice and attractive. Size. Yeah, put a couple more in there. The goo looks hungry. <laughs> the flavor of the nutmeg, the cinnamon, the vanilla just comes through so so well. And obviously, the pumpkin itself has so much uh, flavor on its own. You know, all the, all the time. time. Careful, hot. Oh yeah. So let's check out our seasoned rice. Is yeah. Hmm. Lydia, you're the best. Fantastic. Thanks for all your help, and I will never be the same again after cooking with you. Thank you. Thank you very <laughs> much. Most people think pineapple come in a can, but Rosie is going to set us straight. Rosie. Hi. So nice to meet you here. You too, thank you. For years, I heard about the antique one black pineapple. Mm -hmm. And people still, every time I tell them, they think I'm making up a story. Mm -hmm. So I have to bring them here to show it. <laughs> okay, Walter, this is the Antigua black pineapple. There are two more popular varieties of pineapple, the queen and the cayenne, which is the dole or the Hawaiian pineapple. The one I got in my hand now. Uh, exactly. This one does not grow as big as the Hawaiian pineapple, but it is much crispier, sweeter, and yellower in color when you open it up. We use the shoots, they grow at the base of the mother plant. From planting to maturity, it takes 18 months. And one plant only sends one pineapple. One pineapple. Exactly. Interesting. So obviously it's a labor of love. It's not it something is. that oh, can be it mass is. produced. Are you talking to each pineapple individually every day as you walk through? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you have to. I want to see. Mmm. Rosie was in line, I tell you. High residual sugar, great flavor, fantastic. In the 18th century, all the recipe books make reference to pineapple, because pineapple traveled extremely well on the ships. Pineapple was also used in the 18th century as a sign of hospitality. Reason for it, sea captains brought it back, parked it outside their house, just a lot of history behind it. Today, however, I am, if there's such a thing as heaven for pineapple, I'm here today. Because there is no sweeter pineapple known to man than the black antique one. In the City Tavern cookbook, I have a recipe for a pineapple relish that uses honey. However, using an antique one pineapple, I can omit the honey because they are so sweet, so much residual sugar in it that I don't need it. The other beauty is today I have lemongrass, or they call it here fever grass. This came out of the ground this morning. Just cut the pineapple down real quick. Make sure that you don't have any of these spots that the pineapple has historically into it. So all you're gonna do is just cut it in a nice dice. 
like I'm doing here. We're going to take some red onion. And the reason I prefer red onions for that is because the color. And also the, the flavor it gets it. And the red onion, we're going to dice. We want to make a really fine dice on that. It has its own flavor, but it works extremely well with the pineapple. The next I have ginger that I already chopped earlier. A little ginger in it to let it marinate a little bit. In my books, the recipe calls for rice wine vinegar, but when I'm in the islands and the citrus are so fresh, I squeeze some lime juice, let it sit for a little bit. Now comes the most important part of this recipe, which is the lemongrass or the fever grass, which actually is an important thing to know when you do it, because you don't want to take the top of the stem. What you really want is the bottom part. And because it's kind of hard, you want to cut it really, really thin. So you get the flavor out there and take the outer leaf off. The inner leaves is what you're looking for. What, a, what an aroma, spectacular. Again, picked right this morning. And it goes wild all over the island. So, and you cut it really fine. If you put too much lemongrass into it, it will taste like you have cologne in your, uh, in your recipe, not good. Here we go. Now comes the world trick. And this is where so many people liken it because it's a relish that is sweet and hot. Sweet and hot likes each other. So today, I'm lucky to have a real scotch bonnet in front of me, which is a hybrid of habanero. Look at it, it looks like a, a, a bonnet of a scotchman. I'm going to use some of that, but very little because it's very important. And then, since I'm in Antigua and they have spectacular seasoning peppers, which just have no heat, but flavor, add some of those into it as well. I just make a rough chop. It doesn't have to be fine at all. Contrary to the habanero, that has to be really fine because it's very, very important. Just take a little bit, like literally, no more than a sliver, and if you do this at home, and you do get the habaneros in many of the stores, you want to be very careful. You might want to use rubber gloves. Add it into it, see what's going to happen. Boy. I think I'm going to move to Antigua so I can make this relish every day with the black Antiguan pineapple. I'm telling you, it is beautiful. Great flavor. And the combination of the relish together with the pumpkin pancakes together with the seasoned rice. It's just make a beautiful plate. Let me put a little basil in there, freshly grown as well. You be the judge. Amazing. It's nothing more than what nature has to offer here. You know, it's such a beautiful island. Speaking of beautiful island, Doctor, and I know you are the expert, um, archaeologist, historian. With all the research you've done, what was your take on it? Well, it's a it's an unusual social structure because where a small little island in the Caribbean is suddenly so important and the magic word is sugar. Up until the 17th century, no one had anything affordable that was sweet. So suddenly you get a whole continent addicted, you have to have sugar. And everybody's here now because simply because to make sugar. We are doing a, a very large archaeological excavation. We're trying to learn about the, the life and times and get an idea of what actually happened here over time.